So good morning, this is Mr. Kelly. We're gonna look at number three from 2010, FRQ AP Stats. If you don't have a copy, you can Google it. You can always Google it and find it out. This question deals with a confidence interval, right? So you have to, well, I'll give you some time. Go ahead and read this. I mean, right off the bat, they're asking you to interpret the 95% confidence level. This is something that's really important that students like to uh, screw up, no offense. So the 95% confidence level, what does that mean? Well, we have to have a big idea of what's going on when we create one of these confidence intervals. There's a proportion out there, there's a, there's a population that we're pulling from, and every time we pull from it, you know, we get this little P hat thing, and then we add and subtract the margin of error, so we'll just call that ME, and then it makes this interval. And then we take another sample and it comes from a different place in that curve. So it's a different P hat, right? And you create this different interval. And then you get intervals that are constructed all over the place. Here's an interval, there's an interval, one's way out here, right? Sometimes it's in here. And the goal is always that somewhere inside your interval is the true proportion, whatever the proportion of the population is that you're looking for measuring. So here's just one interval that we constructed or they constructed one interval it either contains the true proportion or it doesn't okay so what you don't want to say is there's a 95 percent chance that it contains the true proportion that's not right that's thinking of it backwards that's thinking of it like the true proportion might be in it or might not because it's bouncing around the true proportion is what it is it doesn't move at all what changes are these intervals that we construct so if we were to construct lots of intervals, some of them, most of them, in fact, 95% of them would actually contain the true proportion. And then 5% of them actually would not contain it. They'd just be, you know, call it bad luck or whatever. So they want to, you know, they're testing to see if you understand that confidence level. So here we go. A 95% confidence level means that if we were to take many, many samples and from those samples, we construct a confidence interval, 95% uh, of those intervals constructed would contain the true proportion of, and then always go context, right? Go context. Proportion of households that contain at least one dog. So that's what 95% confidence level means. If I were to construct lots of intervals, 95% of those intervals that I construct, they, I'll call them winners. They'd be winners. But 5% would not contain the true proportion. And that's what the confidence level means. All right, next part. A National Pet Products Association claimed 39% of all households owned at least one dog. All right, let's pause a second. I'm gonna go up and look at this interval. They are claiming that 39%, that is between, this is what, 29.8, so this is like 30% and 54%. So that 39 is in the interval that, that we constructed. So, I mean, does that make sense? It does to me, right? I mean, it's possible, it looks, we say plausible, it's plausible, which means, uh, you know, it's possible that 39% is in, is the true value. So the question, the specific question here is, does the Humane Society's interval estimate, or I'm sorry, does the interval estimate provide evidence that the proportion is different than 39? Or in other words, does this interval, you know, give some indication, give you evidence that it's not 39? So the answer would be no. The Humane Society's interval contains 0.39. Notice how it's in the middle. So it's plausible that 39% of the households contain a dog. Therefore, there is not evidence that it's different. Make sure you answer the question. There is not evidence that it's different than the claimed national proportion. So then lastly, how many households, in other words, you're going to be solving for N here. Okay, how many households, that's N, we're selected in the sample. Show how you obtained your answer. So I'm gonna go back up to their interval up here. They tell you right here, this is P hat, right? And then plus or minus, this is the margin of error. That's how confidence intervals work, right? So we know that, I'm gonna write some things down. We know that P hat in this sample was 0 0.417, okay? We know that the margin of error, that's the part you add and subtract, that's 0 0.119. So when we construct an interval, we always take a sample and we find the proportion, that's p hat. We add and subtract the margin of error. So what is the margin of error? If you remember, we get that by using the formula z star times the square root of pq over n. Put little hats on it because we took a sample. So this part right here, ooh, let's change colors, so nice. 
this part is called a margin of error. And that is what we're going to look at because that part has the N, right? I mean, that's the part you can manipulate with the N. So I'm just going to write a new formula over here. The margin of error is going to equal Z star. That's French in my class for the square root of PQ over N. So, you know, what values do we know and what values don't we know? So we know the margin of error. We can substitute that in 0 0.119. Uh, Z star here. So they said it was 95% confidence. All right. So how can we figure that out in our calculator? If you remember figuring out Z star, you need to include the other tail. Essentially what you're asking is how many standard deviations away do we need to get the 95%? So if I draw like a little, I don't know how your teacher did it, but for 0.95, uh, we want to find how many standard deviations we're going to use the standard curve, right? For Z score zero one. And so we got to include that tail right there if we're doing, um, if we're going to use inverse norm, we're going to include that tail and the middle 95%. Or maybe your calculator does center. And some calculators do that, but I don't do that because not all calculators do that. So I like to teach for everybody. But inverse norm right here. So if we put in 0.975, and then I keep it on the left for everybody, as I said. Uh, 1.9599. So that's what Z star would be. Let's put that in 1.9599 times the square root of. Now, if you don't have a P hat, then uh, we can use 0.5. Sometimes the questions, they don't, they don't lead you up to that. But this one, we do have a P hat. It's 0.417. So we're going to plug that in right here. 0.417 times I say Q hat, but it's one minus that. So that would be what one, we'll just say five, eight, three. Ah, oh, please be right. Even stats teachers don't like, all right, we'll put it right there. All right, so that is our formula. We just need to solve for N. So the first thing I would do is I would divide both sides by 1.9599. And in my class, we did show how to do this. We made a little program that does it for us. But you still have to show this part. You have to show the numbers being plugged in because they want to see like that you know what you're doing, essentially. But I would divide both sides by 1.9599. Then I would get rid of that square root. So I would square both sides. Let's see where that takes us. I'm going to put all that in the calculator. So check out how I put that all in the calculator. I put the margin of error divided by, I really just scrolled up and grabbed that number right there. And then we squared it. And all of that should equal. All right, let's do that. Let's write that down. All right, so I calculate that all out. It's 0 0.003686. Write that down. Equals. They canceled. I squared. They would cancel. So I'm just left with what's underneath the square root. At this point, I would probably multiply both sides by n, right? And then they would cancel over there. And then I would divide by this ugly decimal here. So 0 0.0036. And so if I divide this by 0 0.003686. So what I'm essentially looking at is these two numbers here divided by this number here. That'll tell me what n should equal to make that margin of error. So in the top, I have these two numbers. I'm going to just scroll up and grab that number there for the denominator and I guess 65.948 so 65.948 and remember when we're doing sample size you can't have 0.948 people right so we're gonna round that up we're gonna round that up to 66 people all right there we go show how you obtained your answer I think we did that pretty well how many households were used so there you go let's make a context statement and we're done boom the Humane Society sample, 66 households for a sample. That's it. That is our margin of error slash confidence interval question.